。これ今流れてるの？これちょっとわからない。流れ。ワロタとか流れてるし。それニコ動ですね。ニコ動ですね。<笑>すなんかさ、帽子で話しててさ、それネセシティなくあ、ネセシティの話しますとか言ったらしいです。<笑>なんかネセシティの話しますって。<笑>エピなくないみたい。じゃあエピのあ時間ないっつって。<笑>コメント反映しますか。カミカミかしてる。あもちろん。半分久しぶりやかわからん。We were... このライブ始まってるちょっと待ってちょっと待って<笑>配信ができてるかどうかは全然わからん無理かもしれないあと何分余裕あるえカズマあれ俺のチャンネル見れる今ちょっと5分待って5分 YouTubeYouTube パンクチョあるえっとね N タ<笑>チャンネルチャンネル持ってるんだあ、いけたザ・ファンサイグランドファイナルなんてあ、マジか動画の編集<笑>すごいすごいねでも今、ライブストリームしたら高井君と俺がドアップしてるいいんじゃないですか今そうなってます<笑>いいいいゴールデンカップ2019ザ・カンサイ2019じゃんカップ2019グラファイ<笑>決勝での本人がセットアップですね<笑>これでインクが<笑>すごいなテクノロジーがすごい。すごすぎ。ケールベンドンドン。いいし。ゴールデンカップグラファイ。始まるよ。始まる。ダイオーストリー。始まるよ。<笑>始まるよって言うと<笑>今来た来た来た来た<笑>おお出てる出てる出てます出てますすごいねこれすごいなこれ今じゃなんか俺のドアップが映されてるってこと<笑>あおお映ってる恥ずかしいなそれ<笑><笑>すげえ恥ずかしいな自分でドアップが映ってるって宣言をするっていうすごい恥ずかしい感じで<笑>ねなんか10秒ぐらい前の恥を<笑>ねえすごいなこれめっちゃあの公開で恥かかないでしょ確かにね<笑>あっつってるっつってる。<笑>
すごい。
Expired. 
Welcome to the uh, grand final for Golden Cup 2019. On government, we have EF Rude Ditodo Kokai. Opposition, we have Love, Sexy, Orient, Yellow, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the one first round is this house regrets the narrative indication that success in life is contingent, contingent on one's level of academic achievement. So without any further ado, I'd like to call up the Prime Minister of the case with Mr. Mitz. Be here. Academic achievement always has tops and bottoms. And when certain individuals intrinsically has a, intrinsically has a lower academic performance, we think those individuals will drop out and do not actually have a succeed a life with success. We don't think that those individuals should drop out just because they have academic performance, but because of the fact that though even without academic achievement, you can be happy. We did, we did, that is why we are very happy to propose motion. So two things in my speech. Number one, why people with low academic achievement are going to drop out in their product. And secondly, I'm going to refer to how the counterfactual looks like and how individuals who did not have lost, for example, high academic performance still can be happy, or otherwise, how people who have high academic performance are not, uh, not necessarily going to have a like, successful life. But before that, let's look at the framework of the debate. So firstly, we believe that the context of this uh, narrative which occurs in this society is where a context where the competition of examination where academic performance are quite hard. For example, like South Korea or Japan, where like parents and educational institutions uh, expect in, expect children to have a high academic performances. It, within within those communities, we think this narrative occurs. But secondly, what do I mean by success? We think success are not just limited to objective success, but also we include the narrative of subjective success. For example, psychological well-being, right? Women, for example, uh, they want to be an artist and become artists. We think that is good because that is something that they wanted to be, even if that is not some like material success, right? For example, like psychological success for example if you want to live have a like, family or if you want to have children and you are able to like for example be um, get married with someone and can make family with their own we don't think that whether those like people's uh, money or like for example 3 million yen per year is fine because we, they are already uh, uh, happy when they have children and their family we think that that is a success that we are going to define in this uh, debate no thank you so first let's look at people with low academic performances a, we believe that stigmatization towards low academic performance, people with low academic achievement, achievement are going to uh, emerge. The reason why is because there's going to be a norm that you won't succeed because your academic performance is low, right? The, for example, in middle high school or high school. The reason why is because the motion requires, the narrative that requires in this motion is whether your academic performance is going to be contingent on the life of uh, the success of your life. So if you do not have a, a academic performance high or in middle high school or high school, which is probably going to be your like whole life's academic performances, we, uh, we, we believe that those people's future maps are not going to be happy and not going to be something that those individuals are uh, going to uh, expect it. That is the way thing those things that intrinsically happen because of this narrative. So why is it bad? Because there are always people with low academic performances, examination, because examination ranks individuals, their bottoms and lower classes. So what's going to happen to those people? Firstly, we think that they're going to be depressed, right? Because they feel huge despair on the on the future. Because if you have economic performances, then you are stigmatized by the society, and you are no longer able to be like happier, and be, or your life is no no longer going to be successful. We think that kind of they feel their life in vain, right? They do not actually try to put resources and put effort on the fact that if you you want to be happy or not. In the worst case, we, we, uh, those people commit suicide. We think that is precisely what happens in South Korea, where individuals try to take the exam but did not actually pass those exams, often times those suicide within South Korea are hugely happening with, uh, within the next of their country. Yes. If people cannot become great dancers or singers, people uh, suffer from depression. And that kind of competition is even more severe rather than academic competition that we are having right now in the status quo. The point is, those in those the point is that all, not all students want to have a high academic performances, right? If, if you want to be a very good dancer, it means that you will have to put a lot of effort. But the point is, not every student wants to have a high academic performances. Even people who do not want to access to and who do not want to opt into the like competition of the examination have uh, are coerced to get into those high academic performance competition. I mean, that is precisely problematic. So let's look at a second like analysis of how those students are going to be. 
So the people with low academic performance are going to just give up or commit and do like delinquency, right? Because they we feel that even if I try to make a lot of effort, other other students are anyway going to make effort. So the difference between me with a low academic performance and him with a lot of high academic performance would not never be mitigated. The point is those people just give up the happy like successful life and commit delinquency, right? We oftentimes those people commit or commit or opt into like criminal organization or just commit crime by themselves, right? Just because they do not have they do not feel that they are going to be a future good future within your life, right? So why is it that? Because the point is when, for example, committing suicide or committing delinquency, they just give up the future even though they are, there are a lot of like passes if, with lower academic performances. I'm going to talk about in the counterfactual. So let's talk about a second of how counterfactual looks like. So in, in our paradigm, what does a counter narrative look like? With the academic performances, not, it's not the only path. And rather, we think there are various paths to success, right? For example, as I told you, when you want to live in a rural area and have a family, that is also your success. If you want to be an artist, you're going to be mangaka, we think those success are also something that makes your life happier. We think that kind of counter narrative are, is something that the government is going to support. So let's talk about a second counterfactual, right? Because the point is, firstly, we don't think that the people with high academic performances are necessarily going to have a, a successful life. The, the reason is because one, there's a huge competition on even in the range of people who are who have higher academic performances. Oftentimes, those higher academic like, performances go to universities and then go up into, for example, like working in comp like high ranked companies, right? But the point is, when there are also complex uh, companies which have, for example, like uh, so. But for example, getting higher statuses, right? When the point of the company also only has a two or a limited amount of high statuses within the company, we don't think those those individuals are anyway going to be uh, exposed into a high and harsh competition. We don't think those people who have or all uh, all the time uh, exposed in high harsh competition is something is is going to be happier because they cannot achieve the dream that they want. Even they have they want to have a high status, they have to also all always have to be uh, exposed to a harsh competition. And the point is when there's only a limited amount of high status. This oftentimes uh, a lot of the individuals who have opted into those competition cannot succeed because there's only one, for example, CEO or like like three or four um, uh, middle classes, right? The point is when those when you when those people are opt into harsh competition, but the, most of the individuals can, are able to succeed. We think those people are anyway not going to be successful. So the point of this argument is that even though people who have, who like, made excessive effort on academic performances, those individuals are not necessarily going to be happy and have to live a successful life. So we think even though those narratives are not something 100% uh, true, we think those narratives is something that we, we think is regretful. But secondly, people we, we think the people without uh, high academic performances are still going to be happier, right? As I told you, artists and mangaka. But the point is, even with that material success, we think we, we, people, or uh, if they have, for example, have their like not high hurdle dream and have, for example, having a family, those people are anyway going to be happier without any academic performances or even no like uh, huge pillar of their own life. So we think as long as in, uh, academic performance is not something, like, uh, is not a prerequisite of success, and, and there are a lot of conditions of how individuals are able to be happy, to have a, live a successful life, we're very happy to propose the motion. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to welcome the leader of the opposition, the opposition takes the implement speaker. <laughs> Like it or not, academic achievement is seen as a proxy of many different competencies, which are intelligence, ability to process and reason, but more importantly, the amount and level of focus and dedication, which is an important factor for somebody to be successful. Adults, pretending as if this reality does not exist, is simply driving the younger generation to easier and unrealistic career choices, which is harmful from, uh, for, from a long-term perspective. Even this narrative is, is harsh in some time, or may limit some dreams, we're happy to make this trade-off, because in a realistic sense, many people have to live on as office workers, and in that sense, higher academic achievement is simply more important. First, I'm going to contextualize what, the, what is the paradigm that the opposition side supports, and then going to rebut and then move on to the substantive matter, which is one, why this narrative uniquely encourages children to study and pursue a, a better career, and secondly, how this, how this narrative would rectify the information asymmetry between different social classes. 
now moving on to the context. Number one, I'm going to first depict how this narr narrative is being portrayed. In reality, there is a general correlation between your academic results and background in success, which are income, as they have mentioned, which is directly connected to economic stability. What they have been dismissive on this point is that in South Korea, unless you go to a good university and get a stable job, you would not even be able to date a girl and get married because of the unstable income sources. And secondly, by academic, achieving a better academic achievement, you will be able to take on more impactful works in society, like given an important mission or given a, bit, like a more important occupation which also connects to the psychological well-being of these people, which they have really, they haven't been, they haven't been, they have been quite dismissive on. So we will make this clear to all children. Secondly, what is the relation with other narratives, other existing narratives? So obviously, even under our paradigm, there will be narratives like, number one, overwork is evil, or work-life balance is important, which would stop people from committing overworking or overstudying. And secondly, we also recognize that some exceptional career choices do exist, like becoming a musician, artist, or actors or actresses. But at the same time, we'll make it clear that this will be a very difficult choice to become because it is a very, very rare occupation. So the balance between study and performance is that, in reality, most people have to become office workers at some point or d different professions. And that's why this narrative should be treated as a paramount narrative within society. With this being said, I'm going to first give you two responses to the previous speaker. Number one, he talked about stigma. So we don't really think this is a unique reason, explicit reason to affirm this motion. Because even without this narrative, the community finds one way or another to put ranting on people and discriminate, like looks or number of friends. We don't really think this narrative alone is responsible for the ranting problem. Secondly, they talked about delinquency problem. We don't think this is true. Because this usually happens in a much moderate way. If you go to a uh, in a suburban uh, city, there will be like mild Yankee people who um, who come together based on value of family. The, rather, we think this uh, narrative is important because this helps low performance to organize against the snobbish elite as like a, a, a bond, by having a family bond by creating an axis. So we don't really think that their analysis stands to begin with. With this being said, I'm going to move on to my first substantive matter. Why this narrative uniquely encourages children to study. So obviously, as I have signposted, the first target and the primary target of this narrative are children. As we all know, children don't think study as an important task to take on. Because, and they will like, simply give in to the desire to use most of their time to like TV games or playing baseballs or reading magazine instead of um, bo sitting in boring math or history classes. This happens because of the following two reasons. Number one, there is a severe information of symmetry between children who are in mandatory education, for example, with what's happening in reality, which is adults being ranked based on uh, like the name of university or the academic achievement. And secondly, simply immaturity defeats the long-term perspective, even if they kind of sense this possibility from their, parent, from their parents' conversation. They don't really know that this is a serious problem that they have to act right away. So without knowing or understanding the seriousness of not studying, this creates a situation for children where they come out of school with insufficient ability or knowledge or they didn't even try to go to a better university. The harm is the following twofold. Number one is that when they make the choice not to study and they come out of the university, it's too late to climb up the social ladder. In reality, important jobs like lawyers, astronauts, or consultancies, they look at your academic score and which university you've been, or like the extracurricular activities that you have done, and then they will treat you, uh, they will use it as a proxy to see how intelligent you are, or how much dedication, or how much sense of problem you have, to have towards the society based on what you have done in school. So if you like make the choice not to study without knowing that importance and just come out like from uh, th didn't even try, it is too late because even if you understand at that point, you can only understand that in a retrospect and you cannot go back to go back time. That's why it's extremely important. Uh, yes. So if children have a strong dream of being lawyers or astronauts, the parents of the hearing system can say that you should study because that is your dream. Yeah, yeah. Of course okay, you yeah. The, the problem is time. children usually don't recognize that as an important choice. That's why they go play outside. So um, secondly, um, that's why we think that having this narrative is extremely valuable because we can use this as a fear tactic. Because 
If you don't study, this narrative will function in the following way. You will feel a sense of loss by not doing this important thing, and you it will give, give you the sense that you may lose your future by not opting into studying or not achieving a further academic performance. That's important because time only flows uh, to, to the future, and we have to act right away as, ch as children. Secondly, how this would solve information asymmetry. So the second target of this debate is adults, and especially light or uneducated ones who are living far away from the city. Because of the fact that these adults are not educated or not having been into higher education themselves, they don't really understand the importance. What, what this belongs to the society is that this fixes different social structures because parents reproduce similar social class children. If we have this widespread narrative saying that academic achievement is important, even parents do not explicitly tell their children that it is an important thing, children may think that not studying may be a bad choice. This will enable children from that social class to commit to opt into education. For those two reasons, ladies and gentlemen, because in reality, academic achievement is very important, and we cannot dismiss this as a narrative, the motion should fall. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome the member of the, the, member of the government. Give your Let's take an example of Mild Yankee as a type of answer. If they are working in the manufacturing industry in the rural area, maybe their income is comparatively low than the working in the, office, the, the city, and the preparable store is Don Quixote, and they love friends, they love families, they love the kizuna, or so forth. We think compared with that, the current students in the South Korea who are are coercing by the parents or the other people to study. And if they fail to the go to, go to the good university or go to the good uh, good corporation, in these cases, you have you only choice is the becoming the chicken restaurant owners. Or that like, they only you have to you have to some some people are unfortunately committing suicide because of these kind of pressures. We think compared with that, we think mild Yankee are also happy, and we say this is also form one form of success we are going to support. We think that. The success is have the subjectivity, the various forms of success exist. We think the current norm or current narrative in the education uh, prevent ch children from the watching, uh, see seeing the other form of success. And we say that they coercively, the only success is the studying hard and going to the good university. We think this is wrong, that's why we regret. So I'm going to talk about one thing. Firstly, the fundamentally, the current system of studying is not so necessary for the old people. This, that is a contention coming from member of government. But, so why this is not necessary? Because firstly, the studying is fundamentally not necessary condition for the success and we actually actually working. If you take a look at the realistic situation of the workers, not the general knowledge of studying in the entrance exam is useful in the past in the first places. What actually need in the job is specific skill, like for example, negotiation skill, like for example the, the calculation in the calculation in the table, or like for example the, if you are engineers, some specific knowledge is necessary, technical knowledge is necessary. And we think this kind of actual necessity in terms of the academic, uh, academic entrance exam is not necessary. We say on our paradigm, the only person who study harder is who loves academic situation, who love research, who, uh, who have the academic interest in the first place. If they do so, we are more than happy to support. They are, work, they are studying hard in terms of the research, in terms of chemistry, in terms of uh, physics or mathematics. We think we are more than happy to support too so. We say this is particularly important because even though they mentioned that proxy of the ability. We think this kind of illusion of proximity of this kind of academic ability, uh, academic ability is rooted by the narrative and the accelerated narrative and the coerced children to the, this kind of vicious cycle of studying harder is fundamental necessary necessity of the children. We think this situation is particularly long because um, regardless of the 
、uh, individual nature or individual interest, they have to go out to work, you know, study hard in the first place. They mentioned that, that、well, dan dancer or the competition as a dancer is also serious. We see unique difference between the competition of the dancer or singer or comic writer or and so on and so forth. Is They choose to compete as a dancer or compete as a some particular job. We say in, up, in, the, in the current context of narrative, we say regardless of their nature, that parents or teachers, lot, lots of other people are coerced to studying because they try to threaten these kind of people. If you do not work, they, you cannot success, you have only have to be the chicken restaurant owners. We think this kind of narrative is, is particularly harmful because regardless of the, their own will, they have to work, study harder, even though this is not、uh, in their Own interest of this kind of, like, for example, memorizing the、uh, periodic table or memorizing the number of the,、uh, mem memorizing the year of the, some historical event. We see, regardless of that interest, they have to coerce to、uh, remind that this kind of situation. We think this is particularly problematic. Yes. The examples you gave us is negotiation and technical knowledge, which are probably taught in high school and university. So, if we don't force these children to study, this excludes people who don't want to study from sustainable economic standards. Yes, this is an exclusive point in our world. Because in our world, the education is also changing. Because we think that basically, that this kind of education for the studying for the entrance exam is this,、uh, mitigated in our paradigm. Because the more, like for example, more practical, necess、uh, practical knowledge is teach,、uh, teached by,、uh, by the schools, or more the main. If the academic is important, to make the children have the interest on the academic things, also teach. We think this kind of just memorizing the one particular thing in order for the、uh, academic exam is mis dismissing exclusively in a framework. We think this is particularly important. Uh, more than that, we say that exclusively the academic ability, the success from the academic ability, like for example, elite university,、uh, elite university or the elite corporation, is comparatively limited sheet,、uh, limited sheet competition. Because we say intellectual jobs have the limited number, because currently, the, the, some, some, like for example, elite of Samsung or the top, the top negotiator in the, some very good corporation is particularly limited number. But compared to that, this kind of the success in the other places is,、uh, is, uh, is the Infinite number or the unlimited number, like for example, the subjective happiness is my life. For example, my l d Yankee are also success in terms of su success in this case, it's regardless of the capacity of the economic situation or regardless of the sheet in the、uh, in the corporation. We think that this kind of my l d Yankee can make it happier in the first places. And more than that, we say that narrative that in the context of some exceptional jobs currently taken, like for example, dancer or the shogi. <laughs> shogi players, professional shogi player, narrative, this narrative that makes the exceptional choices as risk food choices. Let's take the example of Fuji Sota, apparently seven, <laughs> seven dan. Not, they, they choose not to go to the high school. And then they are criticized.、Uh, he, he was criticized. This is a risk for decision. In order to success, that you, you are, at the same time, you have to go to the high school in, in,、uh, in the parallel to the becoming the professional show players. We think actually this is su not successful. Uh, uh, actually, that for the case of Fuji Sota, this is nonsense criticism from the society because Fuji Sota have the lots of other o p p o r t u n i t y in terms of, regardless of the academic success. But this kind of illusion of the academic success is in,、uh, academic success is Important is criticizing other exceptional choices. That's why lots of people, even though they try to be the pro、uh, profession in terms of their own various,、uh, own various preferences, they are dejected because this is risk for choices. But actually, we think this kind of risk is not so important in our paradigm because we say, like, for example, local shogi club owners, or like, for example, local dance, teach, the local dance teachers, not even though profession, the number one top player, is not, is not success. But still, there's lots of success exists in our paradigm. That's why, for those people who want to be their, their own will, we think in our paradigm, in our narrative, we can make these kind of choices、uh, more variable and available. That's why we propose. Thank you very much. Now, I'd like to welcome the member of the opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The 
tiger is only talking about the upside of my Yankee life. I live in, I used to live in Ikebukuro. Let me talk about the downside of my Yankee life. Divorce rate is very high. So many people suffer from alcoholic. Some people borrow money from loan sharks and become bankrupt because they spend a lot of money for pachinko. Be, due to the lack of knowledge or legal expertise, these people do not know where to escape, whom to consult with, right, ladies and gentlemen. Some form of academic skills is correlated with some form of common sense which help individuals to make the most informed judgment about the future. It's too late when people regret in the future. Uh, that is why it's necessary to overly emphasize the necessity of some level of intelligence and necessity to access the basic level of education. And that's why we oppose the resolution. I'm going to talk about three things in my speech. First of all, let me directly engage with Kyoto Taiga about the necessity of professional skills. Secondly, let me talk about how should we cope with the stigma and pressure coming from competitiveness. Number three, what's the most inclusive way of career planning? So let's move on to the first clash points about the necessity of a professional skill. What Deputy Prime Minister explained is actual like, occupational skill has nothing to do with academic skill, such as negotiation skill or such as specific engineering knowledge. That is contradiction to their stance. If you want to emphasize the necessity of a certain skill, you necessarily generate the same level of coercion, which leads to depression as well. Those who cannot gain such professional skill might suffer from depression, mental instability as such. No ma notice, no matter what kind of narrative you support, the coercion necessarily occurs. But the question is whether the coercion is good or bad. But what we say is that level of coercion is good. The social pressure is good. That's our contention. They didn't engage with the value judgment that we have made in this debate. But secondly, uh, yes, we agree that there are many other proxies or indicators to measure individual commitment and dedication. But what we would like to emphasize is that education is the most fair form of indicator and the measure. Because the mandatory education system is what all countries have. The education is a fast competition that everyone universally undergoes. And therefore, and at least no at least everybody, regardless of academic and regardless of socioeconomic disparity, regardless of religious disparity, regardless of ethnic groups, everybody universally access education at some point in their life. And that is why invoking this metric is at least a fair form of an indicator, a proxy to measure individual dedication and commitment other than some subjective values that they have talking they are talking about, such as skill for dancing or singers that limited number of talented individuals only possess. And that's unfair form of indicators. Moving on to the second <coughs> level of question this debate. Uh, go ahead. This debate is not about whether the best metric is something or not. This debate is about whether Deciding one yeah. metric is something good, or whether having a lot of variety of success is good or not. Why do you think that just having a one single good is far better than having a variety? Yeah, that's, that question can be thrown back at them. What kind of counter-narrative do you support, and why that counter-narrative is better than this debate? We are always uh, making a comparison about the many different scenarios, and we are trying to make this debate inclusive to everybody, regardless of their uh, traits and personal ability. Moving on to the second class point about how should we deal with uh, stigma and uh, social pressures. First response, first counter analysis is with or without this kind of narrative emphasizing academic ability, there are many kind of stigma or pressure that exists in our society. So the solution is let's make students or children get used to this kind of stigma and competition at early stage of their life so that they can be ready for entering the competition at any industry or any professions. Right? It's necessary for children or teenagers to gain the skill to sort of adjust their uh, like, uh, commitment and sometimes take a break and rest when necessary. This kind of controllability or supervision or management of a lifestyle is necessary at early stage of their life. It's, it's very brutal for of a government to show unrealistic illusion to children even though the society is shaping the ways in which many corporations or adults sometimes value academic ability or individual commitments. So but our solution is to make them used to it and get them overcome that at, the, at, at any point. Secondly, the pressure is good because their contextualization is drop out kids. Some kids um, might commit juvenile delinquency and drop out from the educational system. That's happening already in the status quo. What should be the solution? Because the reason why these individuals in a poor district with a high crime rates commit delinquency is because these people see no value in going to school. These people see no value in using academic ability as a social ladder to change their futures. Therefore, in order to enlighten this ignorant community, the pressure is the only solution to send a message and to send the narrative to parents, community, or teachers that education is one of the important options to cultivate a horizon, to widen the opportunities that individuals are able to explore in the future. There's nothing bad about it. Yes, we agree that 
Some people want to be dancers, some people want to be uh, singers, but that's not a trade-off. Even after graduating from the college, individuals are able to become dancers. You know what? The reason why I went to Keio University was because I really loved Gancha in J-Soul Brothers. That he was the, uh, the, the most popular guy in Keio University, and he became J the member of J-Soul Brothers after graduating from the college. So any option is not mutually exclusive with going to school, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So therefore, they make an unfair trade-off between a uh, pursuit of other career professions and you know, pursuit of academic ability. We are able to uh, pursue uh, both of them. Moving on to the final uh, uh, issue in this debate, what's the most inclusive uh, way of career planning? There are counter solutions like this. You can be singer, you can be dancer, you can be artist. We believe that's an unrealistic illusion. It's brutal for the society to show such unrealistic career option to children. Like I was working in the entertainment industry, the competition is way harder trying uh, compared to like a usual uh, companies, a businessman. The only limited number of talented individuals or skilled individuals are able to get dreams in such industry. Compared to the academic ability or academic skill, is open and inclusive to everyone. Let's take a look, look at the reality. The many prestigious, prestigious universities have far more diversity of race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation uh, compared to the past in the, in the status quo. That's not because of affirmative action. That's because of the efforts and result of individual efforts of many social groups in our society. Just like this example exemplify the fact that the pursuit of academic ability is the most inclusive and open for everybody. Even social minority or disenfranchised individuals in society have a chance to be successful at some point of life. It's very brutal and irresponsible for them to say that you can be dancer or singer, even though the option is far more limited, even though the chances in which you can get success it's far more uh, very uh, far more dubious so for all these reasons ladies and gentlemen we have to um, uh, at some point we have to embrace a uh, utapon but at the <laughs> same time we have to emphasize the necessity of academic uh, career path we are happy to oppose thank you thank you very much now i'd like to open the opposition reply to close up, the, close up their bench in four minutes First, I'm going to talk about, speak to the issue of is form of success or perception of success being narrowed because of this particular narrative? And secondly, I'm going to address the issue of as adults or parents or the government, why should we put forward a narrative based on reality? Because if we pursue an unrealistic narrative, this will just make people unhappy. Now, the fundamental failure coming from their side of the house, ladies and gentlemen, is that they have mixed up a widespread narrative as a dominant narrative. As leader of opposition, I have clearly told you that even having this narrative as a paramount narrative, there are also coexisting like narratives as exceptions. So existence of this narrative in tandem with other narratives is actually good because as a mainstream, people can pursue a career with better academic uh, achievement and pursue a better and more stable successful career which would provide them with various merits that we have told you. Now, the only example, uh, the, the, the example coming from Tarai Tarai was like mild yanti and like it's good. Actually, like I've, I think they haven't really listened to my speech because I have told you that this example exactly demonstrates why having this narrative is not so harmful. I've told you that they organize and come together because as a family, maybe not as successful as astronauts, but they're still happy. Because a narrative, ladies and gentlemen, even if it's a widespread narrative, it always creates a counter-narrative. This is actually my example and not his. So we don't really think that, again, this form, having this form of narrative actually would specifically discriminate or specifically narrows a, a, a form of success. The burden of proof of their side of the house, ladies and gentlemen, was with this premise, with this, with this realistic premise, why do we have to eliminate this narrative, which is beneficial, which they haven't really proved to you at all? With this being said, I'm going to move on to my second flashpoint, is, which is, as adults, why should, we, um, why should we perform a realistic narrative? So, the, the contention coming from their side of the house is that we can broaden career choices. They haven't really looked at the downside, which Mitsushi has told you, because we've made it clear that this, like, 
this is an unrealistic expansion of the horizon to an unrealistic extent. It may just go beyond the cliff and people may fall off of this thing. Here. The Fujisoda example which Takai-kun gave, gave us is a, actually a good counterfactual because it's unusual to be as a high school student to be as a good professional chess player as he is. Most shoji players even like struggle to become professionals. They, they, they stay in the organization called Shoreikai and they are thrown out if they are not able to become a professional player. Some quit and what they do afterwards is one, they try to become an office worker or two, they still simply have to drop out. What this implies, ladies and gentlemen, is that by having this narrative as a paramount career choice, which is, un which is realistic, we encourage people to make a conscious decision even when they try to pursue an unusual or unrealistic career path because they have to understand that they are making this huge deviation from a stable life. That's an important part that they, really ha they, that they haven't really told you. Because we've clearly told you that preparation is important. And as I have raised in my POI and as Mitsushi has engaged, Negotiation and technical skills are taught in universities or high schools, for example. Being dismissive to this educational opportunity simply lets people fall. We have also talked to you from member of opposition that education is the most inclusive and universal, universally accessible option to rise in society. This happened to the Japanese Americans um, in the United States after like World War II or even before the Second World War. They, they have risen as a good minority because they have pursued education and didn't really try to become a funny actor or a funny musician. For all those reasons, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, because we think that we should take, it, take reality into account, the motion should fall. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, like well, The rebuttal to the member of opposition. Firstly, she talked about the introduction that there's a downside of Maldanki, right? Firstly, that is exaggeration because we already told you, uh, we already told you that those Maldanki are oftentimes happy. They're just talking about Maldankis who have tried to, for example, make another like uh, fund or, um, for example, acting into like risk assets and then fail, right? But the point is, most of the when the most of the individuals with Maldanki are not actually that, for example, like hot, like. Like horrible, but rather just living a stable life with having a lot of not that much money, but having stable work. We think those people are already happy, so we don't think those like exaggerating the downside of the Maldanki is something very important. But the point is, secondly, even the people who, for example, lose money and commit a pachinko, they still say that they're happy because there are friends who do the pachinko, and there are a lot of like there are also like people who uh, we can, we, I cannot, for example, play with, right? So the point is, as long as those individuals are happy, we think those people are at the end going to have a successful life. So we don't think that the exaggerating the Harms of the mild Yankees is something like, important in member of opposition speech. Secondly, she talked about the academic performance is open and artists are harsh. That is also a misrepresentation, right? Because what we have told you for the member of government is not that we don't say that students should do, for example, top shogi player like Fuji Soda, right? It is okay to, for example, like make a local, like a local school of shogi and actually do a happy life by teaching shogis, right? Even though people who want to be a shogi player and um, were uh, to some extent unable to be a top player, there are a lot of lifestyle choices even within the arena, right? Even though people who are wanted to be artists can actually do a play artists even though, for example, going around Japan or in the worldwide, right? That is why we don't think those we don't actually we don't think that those people who are doing artists or choice play or pro gamer are not a harsh option. But we don't think that is a kind of option that is simply accessible and available to a very easy extent. Second, like thirdly, they talked about education is going to be a universal metric. I already told you that we are not saying that being a pro gamer is a necessary metric of success, right? But we are, we're, what we are saying is that there, each individual has a different metric of success, and we don't think that there's, there should be a one universal metric. Even though education is something like objectively best, we don't think those best metrics applies to every individual. We don't think that uh, analysis matters. Fourthly, they talked about there, we should get ready for the pressure, right? We think this concept is good for students who take moshi or like going a pro like, examination. Because because it is okay to make mistakes, right? But the point is, within this academic performances during high school, you cannot make mistakes because if you do not have high academic performances when high school, your path of success is going to be limited in their side of the house. Within that is particularly bad. There is a good, there's also pressure which is 
are useful to be get ready and not. And this particular pressure is not something that people should be get ready because people are dying by depression, right? People are just going to delinquency because they give up all the life that they have set, uh, they have uh, selected in the future. We don't think that pressure is something that people should get ready for. If we think that it's quite immoral to say that even though there are people who have low average performances are going to uh, be dying right now. Fifthly, they talked about education is are important because people, uh, if we teach the uh, importance of the education to people who commit delinquency, that is going to be better for them. But we don't think that is to be true because people who are committing delinquency are people who have low academic performance. So if you, for example, teach the uh, importance of education, there are intrinsically some people who are unable to make higher academic performances. So it is counterproductive. Sixthly, we think children don't have like don't have fixed dreams because they are like kids and they don't have they cannot decide what is best for their future. But the point is this debate is about whether, uh, whether the students about high school, right? Where they are deciding their dream at that time. We don't think those individuals or something like who are unable to decide, but rather those high school students are able and just thinking right now how their future should be. So finally, do you really think that high school high academic performances leads to happy life? My friend, which is a medical student, started studied a lot, takes a lot of credit, but was um, waiting for him, what, what was waiting for him was the exploitative work of doctors. And what he always says is that the best moment I uh, the, the best moment he feels is the moment that he plays platoons. So the point is, when the academic force is something good, we don't think that that is the best of happiness for the for particular individual. When people are feel happiness with a lot of metrics, with the school should be variable, and we think schools should actually Cool. Apply a lot of metrics to the individual, and that is a very happy, happy emotion.